Hallelujah. The spirit of Ishmael, and I just want to follow the summary. The spirit of Ishmael brings quarrels and grumbling. It brings disloyalty to authority. Hallelujah. The spirit of Ishmael is a spirit of disobedience, is a spirit of shortcuts, is a spirit of lack of faith in God, is a spirit of impatience. And what does it bring? It brings conflicts in the family. It brings conflicts to communities, to institutions and nations. And uh, we are also seeing from the book of Numbers that it brings quarrels and grumbling. It also brings disloyalty to authority. Hallelujah. That is where you find the Israelites, the Bible saying they actually arose against Moses and Aaron. And they quarreled them. They began to quarrel. If you remember, earlier, God had, you know, when they disobeyed him, God had killed a number of those people. And so these people here are saying, why did you bring us from Egypt? It would have been okay for us to have died when God's people, you know, died in his presence. You can imagine God has added you some years. And because of the challenge that you're experiencing today, you are wishing you were dead. You are wishing you died earlier. You are being ungrateful. You are actually being possessed by the spirit of Ishmael. The spirit of Ishmael is also a spirit of ingratitude. They did not express any appreciation to what the Lord had done to them. It also brings disobedience and anger. Disobedience and anger comes in where we see Moses uh, striking that rock other than speaking to it as the Lord had instructed. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, obedience to God, or rather obeying God, is when you obey him full length. It's not partially. It's not in part. For your information, even sometimes the devil is a liar, speaks some half-truths. Yeah. When he comes to tell God that he knows God has shielded Job, it is true. God shields his people. But even when he speaks those half-truths, he still remains a liar. Because he speaks those half-truths to get hold of you. Hallelujah. And so Moses is not happy. And he tells them, come closer. And what does he do? I can see, by the way, Moses happened to have been one person who struggled with anger. So if you want to be delivered, you actually can be delivered from anger. You are not the first person. A great man and a leader like Moses struggled with it. That is why he had to kill. Now here he calls them to come closer. And how does he address them? You rebels! <laughs> and he's coming from the presence of God. God has just instructed him. You rebels! Must we get water from this rock? So he raised his arm, the Bible says, and he struck that rock twice. And there was water. Water gushed out of that rock. Water that was enough for the people to drink and for their livestock. The faithfulness of God. Hallelujah. Amen. The faithfulness of God. But the spirit of Ishmael pushed Moses to disobey God. It also gave him what? Anger. Let me show you something else. So you see a combination of anger and disobedience. And then um, you want to be careful with the spirit of Ishmael. The spirit of Ishmael has a tendency of aborting destinies. It brings abortion of destinies. Aaron and Moses, when they began the journey, the intention was that they would lead the people of God to the promised land. But because of the spirit of Ishmael, their destiny has been aborted. So it is okay. And that is why you see people in this country, people who have good cars, but they still go for other cars, bigger ones, more expensive. And if that person is a leader, where they come from, they are, 
there, there are young people there who are not going to school because they don't have what? School fees. But this person, he's led by greed. And he wants to accumulate as much as possible. And you wonder, what for? Now, we, we have seen over even the social media, people parading their cars. And so they go telling you, this one is how much, this one is how much. And any day they are going out, they only use one car at a time. The spirit of greed. The spirit of Ishmael. You don't care about other people. You want to get all everything at once. You want to use shortcuts. And that is how destinies are aborted. The children of Israel come out to be people who are very impatient. When you go to the next chapter, the book of Numbers, where we have read from verse 20, if you go to verse 20, 21, you will be surprised. Uh, and that is actually where I want to read as we just proceed. Let me start from verse, 20, verse 1. When the Canaanite king of Arad, who lived in the Negev, heard that Israel was coming along the road to Adarim, he attacked the Israelites and captured some of them. So they have gotten water together with their livestock. But still, as they continue with their journey, they actually found an enemy. So this king of uh, the Canaanite, or Canaanites attacked them. So verse 2, then Israel made this vow to the Lord. If you will deliver these people into our hands, we will totally destroy their cities. The Lord listened to Israel's plea and gave the Canaanites over to them. They completely destroyed them and their towns. So the place was named Homa. Look at verse 4. They traveled from Mount Hor along the route of the Red Sea to go around Edom. But the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses. And they said, why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the desert? There is no bread. There is no water. We detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They beat the people and the many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it on a pole. Anyone who is beaten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was beaten by a snake and they looked at the bronze snake, he lived. At least I know we know that story. Where Moses made that bronze snake. But look, where, where are we coming from before we get to the bronze snake? We are coming from a position, a state of impatience, a state of disloyalty, grumbling and complaining. The spirit of Ishmael. Hallelujah. Watch against the spirit of Ishmael. It can abort your destiny. It can cause you to sin against God. Hallelujah. It can bring disobedience and disloyalty in your life. The spirit of Ishma. So when you look at what happened in uh, chapter 21 of Numbers, you realize that uh, this spirit can actually lead to God's wrath. It can attract God's wrath and punishment. And uh, finally, it can bring death, spiritual and physical. Because we have read that many people were beaten by the snakes and they died. Hallelujah. Can we overcome the spirit of Ishmael? Because 
the title of the message is Dealing with the Spirit of Ishmael. So one is John chapter 3, verse 14 and 15, which is just taken from uh, this scripture in uh, Numbers. So we look up to Jesus. Look up to Jesus. The Bible says, And Moses made the bronze snake and lifted it. And so everyone who looked up to that snake, they actually were saved. They were healed. So the same way, we look unto Jesus and we shall be saved. Rather, we shall be delivered from whatever situation God will intervene. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 and verse 22. Verse 16 says that, uh, let me just, just read. Verse 16. The Bible says, So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. One of the desires of the sinful nature is greed. Amen. So, if you want to overcome, other than looking up to Jesus, you live led by the Spirit. Now, verse 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, uh, faithfulness, uh, gentleness, and self-control. You see, it continues to give us the fruit of the Spirit. So, many are times why people would miss out on overcoming the spirit of Ishmael is when they do not allow the Spirit of God to operate in their lives. When the Spirit of God is at work in your life, you realize that you will have patience. Somebody say amen. amen. You will have patience. If for whatever reason, uh, numbering or itemizing the fruit of the Spirit was going by any order, then you realize that patience comes number four. Praise the Lord. Amen. Patience comes forth in the fruit of the Spirit. And so we need to have that. It will help us um, not to fall into this kind of uh, spirit. You see, church, the spirit of Ishmael can also cause you to be sick. It actually can bring sickness and lead to death. Because you want to use shortcuts and get all everything very fast. This spirit of Ishmael can actually cause you to be sucked from your place of work. Yes, the spirit of Ishmael is very alive today. With greed, people running and rushing to get all everything. Look at chapter 5 of Acts. Ananias and Sapphira. They agreed. They went and sold that piece of land. And when they came back to the apostles, of course they were entering, I think it is the man who was to take the amount of money. So, Ananias goes in first. And I can imagine by the time he was entering, he said to the wife, Nati oba utu azia? Sinivile tumesema? So that in case she is called, she comes to speak the same language. You know the way young people want to say deal? Deal. And so he got in and he gave his lies. And Peter asked, why would you lie to the spirit of God? And the young men were there, ready for a job. He fell down, he died, he was taken out to be buried. And they said, Sapphira, I, I don't know whether they had a receptionist. So somebody was sent to call Sapphira to come in. So she came. And I can imagine. Praise the Lord, servants of God. God be with you. <laughs> and she was asked, is the money your husband just told us you sold, is it exactly that? Yes, 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 it is that one. So the footsteps were still there of the young men who had carried 
the husband to bury him. So they immediately they entered and they had another job to do. They carried this lady to go and bury her. Of course, she had died. And it appears when people want to, or when the spirit of Ishmael comes, it has to get people to agree. Adam and Eve agreed. Sarai and Abraham agreed. Moses and Aaron agreed. Ananias and Sapphira agreed. And many others in the Bible. And so you've got to be careful when you partner with people or even write in the house as a couple the kind of things you agree to do. Praise the Lord. In the morning when I was preaching during the, the youth service, I, I was telling them, it is God's will that parents live, or rather children live to bury their, their parents. But unfortunately, we have had those incidences where parents bury their children, and it is a painful thing. But this, the spirit of Ishmael can make you not even live to see your children get married. Yet the Bible tells us, get your sons, what? Wives to marry, and let them have sons and daughters. So it is you, the parents, right? And it says also, give your daughters into what? Into marriage. So actually, we should live to be able to get our sons' wives and our, we, we hand over our daughters into what? Into marriage. But the spirit of Ishmael carries with it death. I want to bring this to a close. Another way to overcome is to embrace godly contentment. Embrace Godly contentment. And that is the final scripture. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 and 7. First Timothy uh, chapter 6, verse 6 and 7. I have said the point is embrace godly contentment. So the Bible says, uh, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Hallelujah. Verse 7 says, for we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. Amen. Amen. And the job, job being a very wealthy man, he knew that he came empty-handed and he shall go the same way. Oh, that faith was at another level. We need that faith, brethren. The man who is saying I came empty-handed is a man who was seriously blessed of the Lord. No wonder God had to bless his latter life more than the first life. And yet, he didn't see that as anything to hinder him from loving God. We actually see him in that habit of going to offer sacrifices before the Lord. In other words, he would go to worship God. Oh, may God have mercy on us. Some people, when you get a job worth 15000 as your salary at the end of the month, you have time to buy bundles and spend time in the house. You cannot worship God because you have a, a big salary. Now, which salary are we talking about? Yes, I know that is money to somebody. But God is willing to bless you beyond that. God is willing to bless you. I hear people talk about a six-figure salary. Praise the Lord. God does not have a problem with that. The Bible says that God is the God of all flesh. All managers, CEOs, and directors of companies and institutions, they are flesh that belongs to God. So God has a way of even causing you get jobs in those big places. But you must get to that level where money and whatever wealth you have, whatever God has blessed you with, is nothing. You humbly go and worship God. I remember of one man I know, anytime he wants to give something to the Lord, he does not, he has gotten to a point, he wants to give to the Lord the much God has blessed him. 
But now he knows the church may be excited to announce. So him, he wires money to the, to the account. So one time the pastor was sharing <laughs> that this man got to know the pastor was, was traveling out of the country for a mission. And he decided to bless the pastor with the air ticket. Imagine he put in two million. Two million. So, how much does he put in to support the work of God? A lot of money. And he does not want anyone to talk about it. He sits somewhere where you will not even recognize him. And he loves God. But you see, you must have gotten to a certain level not to love the things of this world. Praise the Lord. Yes, not to love the things of this world. It is okay we are going to look for the things. We are going to look for money. We will buy cars and build houses. But they cannot take the place of God. And they shouldn't take your heart such that they are the ones controlling you. Some people, you give them 50,000. bado iko. Anatembea na salimia wapendwa kidogo hivi bana siwe sana. Eh. Ya 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 ya. Anaangalia wallet bado iko. Inamsumbua tu. Kama ni mama unashindwa ni nini kila wakati anapeleka macho kwa kibeti. 50,000. Because that is what? A lot of money. We need to get to that level of knowing. We came here empty handed. And when God blesses us, he blesses us to use whatever he has given here and we are using it for his glory. And when our time comes to go home, we shall leave all everything here. Hallelujah. I have seen people, <laughs> uh, this happens mostly in Nigeria, but I have seen people trying to defy this scripture where the Bible says we came with nothing, we brought nothing to this world and we can take nothing out of it or nothing with us when we die. So I've seen people try to defy this scripture. And so you see men saying they need to be buried in their homes. We had that kind of a burial in Kisi someday. So now when he's buried in the sitting room, people just move from that house, isn't it? It is a way of somebody thinking they are still alive and they're living in that home. Are they there? The spirit of Ishmael. We must overcome that spirit. It has more trouble than we can handle. From disobedience to aborted destinies to disloyalty to authority to sickness to death. And I don't think that is what we want to subscribe to. Hallelujah. I had preached some series I said earlier about faith and the waiting on God. But there should be a balance. Hallelujah. There should be a balance. When it was the right time, God gave Sarah and Abraham the son Isaac. And before that time came, they were doing their guesswork and they messed up. How do you get a son? And the Lord says, he shall be a what? A wild donkey of a man. He shall be against everybody and everyone will be against him. That's not a life you want. Let's be upstanding. I know we have issues we are trusting God for. I know we have dreams we are trusting God for. We have a destiny we are pursuing. But as we do that, we want to be careful. Not to fall in the trap of the spirit of Ishmael. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We can raise our hands to the Lord and share this prayer together. Raise your right hand to the Lord as we share this prayer together. My Father and my God, 
We are praying this together. My Father and my God, thank you for your word. I thank you for my dreams and vision in life. But I pray, O oh Lord, that you will help me to be patient and contented with what you have given me as I pursue that which you will give me. I pray by your spirit that Lord you will uphold me not to fall into the trap of the spirit of Ishmael but to wait for the genuine blessing of God the covenant of God and not a counterfeit I reject the spirit of disobedience I reject the spirit of disloyalty to authority that pushes me to have my way against your will. Help me, O Lord. I reject the spirit of death, the spirit of anger and the sickness that come with the spirit of Ishmael. In the name of Jesus. And I embrace life. Health. In the name of Jesus. For that is my portion in you. Help me, O Lord. In Jesus' name. I pray and believe. God bless you, church.